Hello and welcome. I'm Michelle Merchant Johnson with Love Life Coaching, and I help you as a single woman own your own value and attract your high quality man. And as you know, on this channel, I love to interview incredible experts and gather their insights and tips and wisdom to help you on your journey to love. And I'm so pleased today to have a very first time guest who I've wanted to connect with for a while, and that is the amazing Alex Cormont, the French relationship expert, and he is here to really give us the insights and inside scoop on how you can have more success and happiness in your love life. So welcome, Alex. Hello, Michelle. Thank you so much. And hello, everyone. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me on your YouTube channel, Michelle. Oh, so happy to have you. Really excited about this. And as I was sharing with you, Alex, what I'd like to do is kind of start broad, and then we'll kind of get into some more detailed things. So one thing I want to start out with, and I know you've been in this, doing this kind of work for many years, what are some of the top things that you think cause women to struggle in their love life? Just generally speaking, we'll start broad and then we'll narrow down. Of course. Yeah. Uh, I first love to say that this is my passion. So I'm coaching every single day and I'm sure it's the same for you, Michelle. When we see people, men and women, just being able to empower themselves, there is no price on this. It's just amazing. So I have coached so many women since 2007 because I was the first one in France, first men to coach women. So I was so happy to listen to their story and I realized that there is two things, but I would just say that if you ask me one, the first one that I have seen is the social education because we look at Walt Disney, Hollywood, the society. So we really want to live the perfect love and the women I coach, they forgot about themselves. They are trying to please a man. I think that they received the misconception that if you want to be happy in your love life, you need to please him. You need to show and to give him what he wants. And I truly believe that this is not the right solution. So I try to help women to be unique, to be different, to be themselves in front of a man. So that will be the main challenges because we have a lot of ideas that I call misconception. And sometimes we forget about ourselves to try to please someone else. Mm -hmm. So if I'm hearing you right, just to kind of recap this, you're seeing there's a lot of influences from society, from Hollywood, first of all, about how things are supposed to be, quote unquote, supposed to be. And part of this perhaps training or socialization or belief causes women in some way to believe that in order to get and keep the, the attraction of a man, they have to kind of like please the man or try to be who they think this man wants them to be. And what you're saying is that's not the right approach. That's probably not going to serve them well. And you're helping people and I'm helping people to be authentically themselves because that's what's more likely to attract in the kind of partner they want. Is, is that kind of a summary? It is the perfect summary. And I have seen that it's strange, but we have to learn how to be ourselves. And I went through this journey also. So I just truly believe it's something that we need to practice, to learn in order to really be able to get the relationship we want and not just what people want, or not just sacrifice ourselves for a significant other. So yes, thank you, Michelle, mm -hmm. for rephrasing what I just said. Yeah, well, I just wanted to put the explanation point on it. So Alex, if this is such a challenge, and I believe that it is for many people, another part of it is I believe we also can lose touch with what we really want or what we really need. Like we're sometimes not in touch with what, what we really desire. Sometimes I'll ask women, uh, what is it you really want in terms of love or a relationship? And sometimes they think they know, but it's actually hard for them to articulate or say that. So if this is really a challenge, like you're saying it is, what is one way that women can kind of figure out if it's, if it's slowing them down and how can they more authentically be themselves? What's, what are some ideas around that? So that's a very good question. And I had the exact same, let's say, trouble or problem. So when I do a group coaching, I have 10, 20, 30 women in front of me. And I ask this question, what are you waiting from a relationship? 
And usually it's very difficult for them to answer. So I try to reverse the question and ask them, what will you never accept again from a man? So if you know your boundaries, if you know what you don't want to leave again, then you can put some words in what you're looking for. And also you kind of protect yourself because when we were talking together on off, we say that we just give coaching to people that are very successful. Women that are very successful in their life, but sometimes not in their love life. So I want to help them set boundaries. I want to help them realize what they would never accept again. And that was the first experience when a woman during the group coaching said, it blew my mind. She said, Alex, I will never accept a man to raise his voice. And I was mm. like, wow, okay. I didn't expect this answer, but it shows that when we know what we want or when we don't know really what we want, we are able to set the boundaries and to avoid all the toxicity in a relationship. What do you think of this, Michelle? I think it's a brilliant question. I think it's absolutely a brilliant question. And I think it's really important to be clear about what you won't accept in a relationship. I think we do have to have some, we might call them deal killers or absolute no's. I think we do have to have that. And I think that's a brilliant question and maybe a gateway question into discovering more about what you do want. And I do think it is important. I always like to encourage my clients to focus on what they do want because I feel like what we focus on tends to expand. Yeah. So I feel like we don't want to stay there, but I do think it's a really good question and a really important question and a gateway question, which brings me to another thing I want to ask you about. Um, I think another fear that a lot of women have is they have that fear of setting standards or setting boundaries because they're afraid that's going to turn a man off or repel a man, or they'll seem like they're too much or they need too much or they want too much. But my experience has been the opposite is actually true. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> so my thoughts and my philosophy are based on one little thing where I said, you need to challenge a man. I truly believe as a French man, we love the art of attraction, seduction. Um, I always had trouble when I first came in the US, I was using the word seduction a lot because uh -huh. for me, it's a good word. But here in the US, I think that there is a negative connotation behind this word. So it's just an art of attraction for us. And if you don't raise your standard, I say men are like kids. They will try to take advantage of you. They will try to play with the rules and they will try to just do what they want. That's mm -hmm. not the best way to maintain a real relationship. So I completely agree with you. I just do feel that when you raise your standard, men know that you're different. They know, also, they know also that they have to fight for you. So the perfect example for me is when you say yes, all the time when a man is asking you for a date or for an activity, there is one moment he will just tell himself that he can propose or he can ask you to do whatever you will accept. No, you have to say no sometimes. You have to challenge him because if he thinks about what kind of activity or just what kind of food restaurant you want to go, then he will be focused on you. He will give you more attention. So I truly believe that by raising your standard, you will be a challenge and that will make a man want to meet you, wants to get you for who you are, not just the image that you represent. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. I agree. And this, this makes me think about something else. Um, I often say that there's a phenomenon out there of men that are what I might call lazy daters, meaning they're not putting a lot of effort, energy, intention to spending time with the woman, pursuing the woman, initiating. And I'm certainly not um, letting men off the hook when I say this. I know you work with both men and women. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do believe that there's a lot of women out there that are perhaps not meaning to, but contributing to that phenomenon because they're willing to do so much of the, what I call heavy lifting. They're willing to put in so much of the effort, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's true. But, you know, I, I like, I think, I think that's my personal thing, right? Um, I just think that after a certain age, right, after 30 years old, the dating process is not the same. Before, men has to do a lot. But after 30, maybe it's because women want to have kids, they want to settle, they want to get married. 
men tend to be lazy in their dating. They will try to not put a lot of effort because they want something fast, easy, and it's not the best way to meet someone. By raising your standard, I know you will be scared, right? You will be scared to never meet a man, just ask for too much, but it's actually the opposite. You will set apart and you will be able to truly be yourself. So I think that when it comes to lazy dating, you should, you should ask for more, for sure. That's my vision. Yeah, absolutely. So Alex, I want to make this really tangible for people. What are a couple of examples of how a woman can ask for more or can raise her standards? So I just want to give a couple of tangible examples if you can. Yeah, of course. The number one example is the one I just said before, because for me, it's just the number one. You have to say no. For example, when a man is asking you to go on a date, he will ask you, would you like to go to this Italian restaurant? You say it you should say no, you should answer no. And I will tell you why. I am a man, right? And before to get married, I was dating. I always went to the same restaurant. So when I enter in the restaurant, I can say hi to the, to the waiter and then he will show me some social value. I know it's my place, I'm confident. So if you say no to a man, if you challenge the place, you can take him to a new place or you can ask him to find a different place. That's, first of all, something that will challenge him, right? Because he doesn't know the place and because you show your personality. So this is my tip number one. Tip number two, I will also make sure that when you, when you ladies organize a date, you try something that you have never tried before. So for example, maybe we are, you will ask him to come to a yoga class or to a gym class and you will try to live a moment that will be very different from the casual dating. And the reason why I ask that it's a big surprise for a man, but it can create a real bond. So immediately the chemistry can be there. So I truly believe by challenging, by saying no, and doing new activities, these are the two first forms of challenge. Now, when it comes to raising the standard, I believe in open communication. You know, for example, I just coached a lady this morning. She told me, Alex, every time we meet, it's great. But after that, he will not text, he will not call for a couple of days. What should I do? Tell him, I would like a man that will be engaged or I just think that you don't like virtual communication. Why? You ask question, you open question, but it's a bit of challenge because you should not be scared. And this guy will understand that you are able to communicate before to come angry and to attack him, basically. Um, I, I will be glad to know how they can raise the standard with your philosophy, Michelle. What, what are the tools that you can share um, for them? Well, you know, I'm, thank you for asking me. That's very nice of you to allow me to I love your philosophy too, so <laughs> well, yeah. of course I want to know. <laughs> yeah. Well, so for me, um, I would say everything in the coaching that I do is really centered around women being really centered in their own value. And when I say that, it means that their value is intrinsic. They know their value, no matter what is or isn't happening with any one man. And the, it, those boundaries and those standards do not collapse in the face of pressure. If they're feeling pressure, if they're feeling like they need to do something, they, they're clear about who they are and what's right for them without feeling like they have to cave in to whatever pressure they're feeling around dating or a man. So this is a big foundational piece. So part of it goes along with what you said is that I think it's really important for women to have the confidence and the clarity to speak up about what's right for her. So I encourage women to be in tune with their inner guidance system, their inner wisdom, their women's intuition, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And usually as women, we can kind of feel that in the body. We can feel that. I know this because I am a woman who spent a lot of time out there in the dating world. We can kind of feel if something feels a little uncomfortable to us. So this can even be from something a man says, where you can just say, hey, you know what? That just really caught my attention. I, I'm curious to know a little more about that. So I encourage women to always stay curious. And then I also, and not be afraid to ask the questions if mm -hmm. something's coming up. And then like you said, um, to speak what is on her mind. And you can do this, I believe, in most cases in a very lovely, feminine way. Most of the time, you don't have to blast a man. 
Like I can, I think you can say if he's proposing the same old Italian restaurant to use your example <laughs> and say, you know, what really sounds good to me, you know, what I've just been craving is some fantastic Chinese food. And I bet you could find the best Chinese food in this town. That How about that? What do you think that about is, that? I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and that's that giving him the challenge, but it's also, she's speaking up for what sounds good to her, for what sounds fun. So I think magic phrases are things like, you know, what would be, you know, what would be so nice for me, or, you know, what would make me so happy, or, you know, what sounds so great to me. And then, you know, be willing to kind of like toss that ball to him and see if he's willing to take the shot, right? <laughs> yeah, that is very powerful. And I can tell you as a man, if you say this, ladies, we will spend 30 minutes to try to know what will be the color shirt we will wear. Because we understand that this is very important without putting too much negative pressure. It's a positive pressure. We want to do good. We want to, good, we want to do a good first impression. So ladies, you can do this. Not, and this is very natural. That's what I love with what you said, Michelle. It just comes naturally. So we don't play games. It's just natural. Yeah. And I think, you know, when it comes to, and I know this is a question you're asked all the time too, Alex, when it comes to like the physical intimacy or when the sex happens or that sort of thing, again, to be really in tune with what's right for you, to be clear about what your boundaries and standards are. And still, if you like a man and you're attracted to a man, you want to let him know that even if you're not ready. So again, you can say, you know what, I, I can feel the chemistry too. And I'm really looking forward to when that time is right. What I also know about me is that I need more time to get to know someone a little better so I can feel really comfortable and enjoy it when it happens. But I'm really looking forward to it. So then, you know, he knows it's not because you're not attracted or that that's never going to be a possibility, but you're still staying true to what feels right for you. You're not collapsing because you feel like that's what he wants or you're not doing it because you feel like you have to in order to catch him or keep him. That's very good advice. That's the tricky part for me because there is this situation where you want to ask women to wait in order to not be too needy or that the men will not take you for granted. In the meantime, it's very important also to build a chemistry. So the advice that you share was, is amazing, to be honest. So I'm glad we have the same philosophy and some, uh, some ideas that complete each other. Yes, I am too. I am too. Yeah, because I just believe that this is really this kind of communication we're talking about sharing authentically about what's really going on instead of just trying to outguess each other or outmaneuver each other mm -hmm. is what really sets up a foundation for a healthy relationship. And that's yeah. what people are looking for. I believe in our communities, that's what most people are looking for. And, you know, when I look at my communities, the women I coached, they are scared to open up their skate to voice their want or their needs because they tell themselves, yeah, but I really like him. So if I don't, if I tell him that I want this, maybe I will scare him away. And it's just coming from fears. It's just coming from a lack of self-confidence. You should know your values, uh, your values, but also your, uh, let's say, attraction value. You know, you should know that you have a lot to offer. So don't be scared, ladies. It's possible to have. And if he just left because you're raising your voice, he is not the right one. You cannot build a relationship with a man like this. But right. there is more beautiful men also that can, can, that can listen to you, that can change, grow, and make you feel happy. So I truly believe in this. Well, and not only that, Alex, I really believe that when a woman does express her preferences or her wants or her needs, whatever the case may be, and shares that with a man, she gets to see how he reacts, how he responds, whether or not he's able to, you know, understand that or, or take that in. And she also gets a chance to kind of set him up to win. It becomes a win-win. So for example, again, coming back to the dinner example, if I say to you, oh, Alex, that Italian restaurant was fabulous, but what I'm really looking forward to now is some wonderful Chinese food. And I bet a man like you can go out and find the <laughs> best Chinese food in town. 
So there I'm setting up a little, you know, I'm like kind of give, I'm giving you the ball here and you're going to take that and you're going to hit the basket because you're going to go find the best Chinese food in town. And then I get to say, Alex, I can't even believe how good this Chinese food tasted. This was like, this tasted so good to me. I can't imagine anything better. And what are you feeling like? You're feeling like a million bucks. I feel event. like a million bucks. And I will ask you to surprise me because I want to eat something different next time. And that's where we play the ping pong. So we just enjoy the game and we create amazing moments. But yes, when you tell a man, that was great. You have one more, you have one point. It's just like a reward and we love it. It's also the game of attraction, a good game. It's just the being playful. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're going to feel like a million bucks. And so that's also what That's also part of what creates that energy of attraction between a man and a woman, because she feels taken care of. She feels looked after. She feels like he's put effort into providing something for her that feels good to her. And he's going to feel rewarded for that because she's going to appreciate and acknowledge his effort. I mean, ideally, that's what's happening. Right. And that's part of what. <laughs> right. Yeah, this is powerful. This yeah. is the art of love, the art of finding someone that match your needs and that also enjoy the time that you will spend together, but enjoy the process of meeting someone. Yeah. So I want to swing back to something you said here earlier, just for a second, Alex, before I ask you another question. And that is when you said women should say no. And I agree with you. I think we don't necessarily have to say yes all the time. But I also think, and I just want to hear your thoughts on this, That there's like a nice way to say no. Like, I don't think we have to say no. <laughs> That's for sure. That's for right? sure. I think that, you know, the perfect example was the one we shared together about this restaurant. Italian food will not just say no. Ah, oh, you know, it's a great idea. I would love to eat pasta, but I'm craving some Chinese food. So basically there is a no with another word like bird just to make sure that we engage something else. But it should not be a direct no because that will hurt the ego's men. So we want to avoid this. Yeah, yeah. So we're saying no, but we're also giving him a we're also giving him an uh, a way to still win, to still yeah, to still exactly. succeed. We're yeah, not just it's, saying no. it's an open no. So we say no, but we open for something different. Right, right, exactly. So here's another question for you. This one, again, is kind of broad. What, uh, what else do you think women typically may not understand about men that would, would help them if they understood more about men? That's a broad question, I know, but in yeah. general... And I know men and women are all individuals, but generally speaking, what are what do we have blind spots? And if so, where are they? <laughs> so that's that's a good question. I do feel that men are looking for a different and unique woman. That's our main goal. So we want to have a woman that we can introduce to our friends, to our family. So it comes back to if you try to meet to meet too much, sorry, our needs basically it will be too easy for us and there's a moment we will take you for granted so the number one thing that you need to remember is that men need to chase you they really need to chase you they need to go after you they need to be involved in the process if not they will lose interest and every woman that i coach it's always this problematic alex everything was perfect it was loving me and it just disappeared And the reason why it disappeared is because there is a moment where he's not chasing you anymore and you're too needy, too available, asking for more, which, which is okay. But there is maybe some different behavior that we can just manage this situation. So that is for me, the number one thing that the women I coach needs to change. Mm -hmm. So just becoming too available and too accessible to a man and yeah. then you're no longer a challenge. So how do we balance that for women out there? How do we balance that with, you know, sometimes we're always hearing from women, well, he might need a little bit of encouragement. Or I remember I got an email from a client a couple of days ago that said, how do I move this along to the next state? And I'm thinking to myself, well, you don't really move it along. But how do we how do we kind of balance all of that, right? How, and once you start dating someone and you've gone on a few dates, how do you still keep up that momentum, so to speak, without it just um, turning into him taking you for granted? 
That was like uh, four questions in one. <laughs> yeah, but I love it. So there is two, two things. Uh, number one is this is crazy because I heard this sentence thousands of times. Alex, I planned a party with my girlfriend, but he asked me to meet the same day. So I just canceled everything mm -hmm. to meet him because I want to see him. You know, I just love him. I feel the butterflies in my stomach. That is for me um, like a red flag. It's not good because if you forget about your personal life, you cannot inspire a man. Mm -hmm. And the other part of my answer are men, I truly believe that they are, there is two triggers that makes men being involved, your social value, your professional value. So if you focus by balancing your life, doing things for yourself, going out, seeing your friends, having your professional goals, men will be challenged. Once you start to unbalance your life, when you just forget about the rest and focus on him, that is natural. Sometimes it's subconscious, but we have to just change. So Michel, my answer will be these two things. What do you think of this? Yeah, I think that's really, really important. I think um, I think that it is common. We've all had the experience, and maybe we've done it ourselves, of dropping our girlfriends or having our girlfriends disappear once they meet a guy. They no longer have time to spend with us, or we no longer have time to spend with them. And I agree, that's probably part of what made you attractive in the beginning, was yes. what you were doing you know, your friends, your professional life, your hobbies, things that light you up, things that that you are passionate about, things that you're excited about. Those are some of the key things that I think make a woman attractive to the right man. And also part of what you say makes them unique. And if, if a man is looking for a unique woman and you're looking for a good match for you, then being out there and sharing those things and doing those things that you're really passionate about, not dropping them all when you meet a guy, I think is gonna help definitely keep things fresh and interesting. And I even think that's important to do even after you're in a relationship or even after you're married. I mean, I was sharing yeah. with you, I've been married now for almost 15 years and um, my husband and I still have our separate interests and some separate friends and things that we do apart as well as all the things that we do together. And I think that's really important. I think it keeps the relationship fresh and interesting and keeps you growing as individuals, which is really important too. I, I feel that this is the best way to inspire a man. When we feel that our lady is living with purpose and she has something that she's passionate about for us it's like we look at you with big eyes we love you we are inspired by you and so we are not thinking about taking you for granted and doing bad stuff because we are focusing on the good things and on you mm -hmm. well and there's a lot of talk out there in our industry these days about vulnerability i think you know Brene brown probably started the whole conversation around vulnerability or at least a big part of it. And one thing that I think we forget sometimes about vulnerability is vulnerability is just not is not just sharing, you know, the things we're maybe not as proud of or the things that we don't necessarily think are as wonderful about ourselves, but it's also sharing hopes and dreams and passions and things that you're excited about. So I kind of like to have women when they're dating focus on some of the positive aspects of vulnerability because some of this other stuff can be kind of heavy and that can come in as you get to know someone better. But I love this idea of focusing and sharing your from your heart some of your passions, interests, things that light you up and excite you. And I think that's also a part of vulnerability. I truly believe in what you say. And because that's the best way to create attraction if you talk about goals that you want to do, let's say I want to travel to Costa Rica and do surfing there. Wow, that will make a man project himself in this situation. And regarding what you're saying here, my philosophy is very specific. I ask the women I coach to not, to not talk about their wounds or past negative experience because sometimes men can use it against them. So let's say, for example, I've got this woman. That was a crazy experience for me. She was in France. She told me, Alex, my ex left me 
So when I come home, he took his stuff. It was not here. And she didn't expect this. And she told me that it happened to her before with the with a previous ex. Oh, and she no. told this story to this guy. So by opening what happened in the past, I think that she put in his mind that the, the only way to break up with her was taking my stuff and leaving without saying a word. So I just truly think that whatever happened in your past, this is something that you need to keep at least in the beginning of the dating stage. When you are in a relationship, it's different. But when you meet a man, if you open up that everyone was cheating on you, I think that there is something in his mind, in his mind he thinks that he can take advantage of you, even if it's subconsciously. So that's a very tricky part, but I truly believe that being vulnerable about only the negative, what you were saying, only the negative things, it's not the best. But if you open up and you be vulnerable about your dreams, your goals, what you want to experience, that is a powerful act of attraction. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I absolutely think it is. And it's part of what makes a woman unique. And you're talking about mm -hmm. how people like, are looking for a unique woman. Yeah, that unique. is very important. Yeah. Very important. So I want to ask you another couple of questions. The first one is, so we do hear about men ghosting and disappearing, and I know you've talked about this and done videos on this, but what are your, what are your recommendations for women if a man, you know, things seem to be going pretty well? I'm not talking just after a first date, but maybe they've gone out a few times and then a man just kind of disappears. What's your, what's your best advice on that? <laughs> I don't know if there is a lot of advice that we can share. The only one that comes to my mind is being distant, right? There is only two reasons why a man will just be distant or pull away or ghost. Number one, it's because there is too much pressure in the relationship. So maybe you're seeing each other too much. There is too much communication. By being distant, you let him clear his mind and come back to you. Number two, someone will ghost you because it doesn't have the courage to break up with you, but also because he knows that by ghosting you, he can come back whenever he wants. So it's what I call the open door. I don't want to communicate with you, but I come back whenever I want. So I do feel that ghosting is a manipulative action. I don't like it from a man. I prefer men that can voice their needs or their emotions. So the only advice that I share is you being distant and not waiting, just rebuilding yourself, cleaning your mind and tell yourself that you have done nothing wrong. And if it comes back fast, then maybe it was just having a lot of pressure, which is okay for me. But if it takes a couple of time and it comes back by saying, I love you, I'm sorry, that's not true. He doesn't love you and he's not sorry. So I don't believe in these words, basically. Mm -hmm. What do you think of the ghosting situation, Michelle? Well, I do think that, unfortunately, it happens way too often. We hear about it quite frequently. Um, I, I have a couple of thoughts that I think are a little bit nuanced. First of all, I think we have to make sure he's really ghosted. Like, I've had clients that have called me in a panic and said, he was talking to me every day and we were in contact every day and now he hasn't called me for two days. He's ghosted me. <laughs> well, in my mind, I'm like, two days is not ghosting, right? That's true. <laughs> he may have been busy for two days. And I'm like, I don't think he thinks he's ghosted you in that case. So I think, first of all, we have to kind of like balance, balance ourselves out a little bit before we come to the conclusion that someone has ghosted. Because mm -hmm. I have found sometimes women think that men have ghosted them prematurely. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. So that's a little nuance. And the second piece is that I do think sometimes it's a normal part of a relationship for one party or the other to need a little bit of time to just kind of sort out their feelings. I do think it would be better if we communicated about yeah. that rather than just disappeared. Um, and I do think that there needs to be a, have a conversation around this. If someone comes back into your life before you just accept them with open arms, mm -hmm. because I, I would feel very comfortable in saying, you know, I I'm happy to hear from you. I have found this last couple of weeks, very confusing though because we were in such close contact and then I haven't heard from you. And I've just, I'm just curious about, you know, what's been going on for you. I mean, it's like, we have to be willing to shine the light in the dark corners to find out the truth, to have a healthy relationship. 
There's just no substitute for it. So I think it's tricky, but I do think sometimes it's pretty normal for one person or the other to need to just kind of like think about where they're at and how and get in touch with their feelings. Like I, I sometimes think men need to miss women before they recognize how strong their feelings are for them. So yeah. from that standpoint, a, a little separation sometimes makes sense. So I'm, I'm a little nuanced on some of this. Does that make sense? That makes a lot of sense. And I, I just agree with you. And I do feel that it's better to communicate. So I understand men, sometimes they need distance. You said, you said it very perfectly. They need to miss women, right? In order for them to know, okay, this is the one. But when it's ghosting without words, Mm -hmm. It could be also very toxic. So we have to be careful, but we can also have an open communication. Yeah. Yeah. And I do think we also learn a lot about people based on patterns. So what you said earlier, yeah. Alex, about if this happens more than once and he comes back and says, oh, I love you. I'm sorry. And that, but it happens repeatedly. That's a pattern. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. That's something we have to pay attention to. Um, if it happens once and he comes back and you're able to have an honest communication and understanding around maybe what was going on, maybe he says, I got scared. I realized how much I felt for you. I had to kind of figure out that I was ready, but I am ready. And I really want to, I really want to see if we can make this work. That's a different kind of scenario than I'm just dropping in and out of your life. True. Right. Very true. Yeah, I do agree. Yeah. So I want to ask you this question. What do you think are a couple of things, one or two things that women should look for to kind of identify whether or not someone could be the right man, so to speak, like for a long term partnership? Do you think there's any particular things women should look for? So number one, I, truly, I just found that men that are stable, right, men that really want a relationship, they will not have big words very fast. They will not tell you, I love you. I was waiting for you. You're the love of my life. Because that's it after the first date. I mean, that's too much, right? It's like too right. emotional. So if you want to find a man and build a steady and long relationship, find someone that is emotionally stable, right? Someone that will just enjoy to get to know you. Um, that would also, that would be my second advice introduce you to the people surrounding him mm -hmm. because when a man is just keeping you on the side that's not a very good sign so you want a man that will be emotionally stable that will introduce you to the people surrounding him and that will make plans i i just found that the last advice is also very important because if he plans in advance oh in two months we can go to this place oh i would love to teach you how to do that oh i would love you to make me discover these things that you love that are men that are very involved. They want to create a relationship, but they are not willing to lose themselves, which is also a good point. So I will say these three things are what ladies should look at it, basically, Michelle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and for me, I think uh, the consistency factor, and, and that yeah. probably comes back to a couple of things that you said there. Um, he's showing up. We look for how this person is showing up over a period of time. I really feel like that's what um, is really key in terms of learning who someone is. You, sh you see who they show up as over a period of time, which brings me to another point, And that is that I don't think there's any substitute for time to get to know somebody. Right. Like no matter how much chemistry or attraction or how much you feel like you have in common, right out of the gate. I just feel, Alex, and I want to hear what you say about this, that it just takes time to really get to know someone. Yes. No matter your age or station in life. No, no matter. It's very important to take your time and to not rush. That's why I was saying when a man is trying to rush, oh my God, I feel so good with you. I feel so empowered with you. Uh, let's do this. Let's do that. Let's have sex. No, 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 no. Let's take our time. Let's get to know each other. Let's continue to make sure that we will not rush the process. But yes, taking our time. And you will see when a man is not doesn't want to take his time, he has something else in his mind. It's not a real relationship that he's looking for. It's mostly because he's physically attracted uh, towards you, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that might be kind of a yellow or red flag to pay yeah. attention to. 
what are a couple other yellow or red flags that you think we have to kind of watch out for? Anything we haven't mentioned so far? I think that we mentioned a lot, but I would just repeat a little bit myself. Maybe when a man is sending you a lot of messages, right? This is when he wants to be in your mind very quickly. So he will tell you a lot of beautiful words. And so in the beginning, you're like scared. But after two, three, four days, you tend to relax and you tend to listen to him. That's where it would just, boom, create a projection where you will fall in love. But it will be too fast. So you need to take a little bit of your time. So that would be red flag number one. Red flag number two, and I found that some of the women I coach are not really focused on this. It's at what time are you able to communicate with him? Because when a man is disappearing during the weekend or at night during the evening, there is something wrong here, right? So mm. I would say looking at this is a red flag. I don't know if you have a lot of clients that are not looking at this, Michelle, but for me, especially in France, that's true also in the US, but mostly in France, I have seen that this is a pattern. So are these men probably in other relationships or married perhaps? So it could be married or at least dating someone else, right? They are always doing things. They are always trying to attract other women. So they would just communicate in the morning or at certain time that are not very the time that people are able to dedicate when they want to build a real relationship. Yes. Mm -hmm. So maybe he's not available at certain times of day. He's yeah. not available. Mm -hmm. Or is married, so he would not have his phone all the time. And sometimes he would communicate a lot, then disappear for three days, come back and communicate a lot, and then disappears. This back and forth, or like black and white, uh, I truly believe this is a red flag that you need to be aware of. Mm -hmm. Please. Yeah, and that kind of comes back to this idea of consistency. And mm -hmm. always you know, his his when I say consistency, I also mean his words and his actions are congruent. They match up, right? He's mm -hmm. not just saying all the flowery, flowery words, but he's got the actions or he's got the he's sh he's showing up in a way where he can bounce. He's not bouncing his his, his word checks, so to speak. His his <laughs> his actions and his words are are incongruence. Yeah. This is very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what else do you feel like um, you would like to share with our audience? What haven't I asked you that I wish that that you wish I'd asked you, or what else would you like to share? I think that first of all, I really do feel that this communication is powerful, and I truly hope that it will help you navigate uh, during this uh, dating process. So, the thing that I ask when I coach someone, a woman. I also ask them to be a little bit involved. So when the man would create the first date, I already ask them to create another date that would be very special, a new activities so they can create chemistry. So I just believe that it's very important to keep this in mind that every date needs to be here to create a memory because it helps create a bond and also it helps you focus on the activity on the moment, not the end results. Because mm. sometimes the women I coach, they want to rush the process. They really right. want to be in a relationship. When they are in a relationship, they want to continue moving forward. And that's where we are not taking our time. So that's one piece of advice. But I want to know what you think of this, Misha, by taking the time and also asking ladies to organize some dates. Is it something that you ask also? I'm curious about this. Yeah, so I'm so glad that we're talking about this because I just love talking with you. This is so fun. <laughs> we're going to have to do it again sometime. Sure, sure. I love um, it too. I, I just love talking with you. So, yes, I love your advice so much about making each date memorable in some way. That doesn't mean that everything has to be super fancy and super expensive every time, but you want to make something that's going to create a memory because it does help you be focused on that event, that particular date, and be in the moment and not jumping 10 steps ahead in your mind, which as you mentioned, is a very big problem. Mm -hmm. Because if we're in our mind space where we're thinking, does he like me? Do I like him? Did I wear the right outfit? Blah, blah, blah. Is exactly. my hair funny? Whatever. Do I look fat in this? Whatever. <laughs> um, these are the things we think as women, I know. <laughs> um, is he the one? Could he be the one? Do I have spinach in my tooth? Whatever. <laughs> If we're so focused on all this other stuff, it's hard to just be present and interact with someone. It's hard to be present and just enjoy that experience for the sake of that experience. 
And I think that's a really powerful way to date. It makes dating a lot more fun and a lot more interesting. So I love your idea of making each date memorable. And coming back to something you said earlier, doing some things, maybe considering some ideas that you could suggest to a man, you could say, you know, a couple of things that would sound fun to me would be you can make the suggestion and let him plan and execute it. Um, when you're doing some creative things, it also brings him out of just his headspace. If he's just kind of in a logical, rational, thinking about his work, whatever kind of space, if you're doing something, whether it's, you know, going to an amusement park or swinging on the swings like kids or whatever it is, it's going to create a memory. And that's going to help you stand out as that, as that unique kind of woman. Now, in terms of your question of women planning dates i am not a fan this is just my opinion i mean that's great i love the fact that we can discuss this that's why i just i just i was thinking about it and i know that michelle you can have a different point of view which is amazing so i want to hear i want to learn also from you yeah well thank you so i am not a huge fan at least for the first couple of dates of women planning the dates and i'm not a huge fan of of women offering to pay on the first couple of dates. And I'm not a huge fan of going Dutch, splitting it, because I feel like that sets you up for more of a friendship or business type relationship. Um, But what I am in favor of is women sharing ideas or suggestions of what she thinks would be fun. We don't want to have these, what do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? You want to maybe have in mind a couple of things that you think would be fun and, and then say, you know what I think might be fun? If you'd like to plan it for us, you want him to plan and execute so he gets the reward, the acknowledgement. And then once you've dated a few times, I'm talking maybe three or four times, then I think you can do something like maybe you could say, you know what I think would be fun would be maybe let's go on a little picnic on Saturday and I will pack the picnic lunch. I'll make this an amazing picnic lunch. (laughs) So see, then the woman is contributing. She's suggesting and she's doing something. So it's not all his responsibility and it's not all his expense, but it's not quite the same as her like saying, I'll pay half or I'll pay this time. I, I just think there's a way to do that that feels more feminine and graceful. So as an example, when my husband and I were dating, he took me on several dates. And then I said, oh, you know what? I'm dying to go to this concert. And I had already bought these tickets to this concert. It was a Michael Buble concert. And I said, and I just, I would just be so happy if you came with me. I mean, you and Michael Buble on the same night. I mean, that would be like (laughs) amazing. And so, you know, then I, 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 I invited him in that way to go with me. And I, of course, paid for those tickets. I'd already bought the tickets. And so that felt graceful to me. I was just treating him. But it wasn't, I don't know, it just felt different than me saying, hey, I know you want to go out and I'll take you to this or that. I just said, I've been dying to see Michael Buble. I got these tickets. I got great seats. If I could have you and Michael Buble on the same night, that would just be incredible. <laughs> so it was just a nice way to invite him out. I just think there are ways we can do it that still allow us to feel more feminine and, and graceful. Yeah, I love your example because you are always very playful. So it makes it very fun, very go also with the flow. And the word that I will remember that pop up to my mind is treating him. You know, I just do feel that it's very important because when I met my wife, the first few dates I had to pay because it's cultural. Also, I truly believe that men needs to pay the couple of first dates. But there's a moment where I told her, okay, that, that I need you also to see some involvement. I need mm-hmm. to see some involvement from you, right? So I, I just truly think that for me, I would ask the ladies to not pay the first time and not split the bill, but the second day to take care of it. That doesn't mean something that they need to pay, but at least to prepare the activity, to just be involved and treat the men and show some involvement. So, but I'm glad to, to have your knowledge also. I think it's a... Uh, being playful is always right. I just truly believe in dating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I do think, you know, especially if you're doing a lot of nice things, it can get pretty expensive. And yeah, so yeah. I think if you want to be able to date in that way, which many people do, it's really a lot of fun to be able to do nice things. Um, I do think there is a, a way for a woman to contribute. And I, yeah, yeah. 
I just kind of feel like I kind of like to maybe have the man. This is maybe where we see things just a little bit different, but I think we're really on the same wavelength overall is um, I kind of like a man to maybe plan a couple of dates. before. <laughs> that. That's okay. I, 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 I... I didn't say that you, you're right, so I give you this. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we're both right. I think it's just you know you have to decide what you feel good about, what yeah. feels good and comfortable to you. And I'm I'm in no way saying that I don't think a woman should ever pay for anything. That is not what I'm saying. I'm just saying I think you know you kind of you kind of feel it out, and it might be a little different depending on what you're doing and what what's being planned. I mean, I, I went out with one guy for a while and we did a lot of like free things. We would go to a lot of freebie things. So there wasn't a lot of, you know, occasionally we'd go out to dinner, but there wasn't a lot of real expense going on there. And so that felt really comfortable because I knew he wasn't really spending a lot on a lot of these dates, but you kind of have to fill out these situations. Yeah. I love what you say. There is no perfect solution for everyone. You have to feel it, ladies. And maybe the last thing I want to say is really that it's beautiful. It's beautiful when you meet the right one. It's beautiful. Love is just powerful. So don't be worried. You can meet someone, whatever your age is, whatever your past relationship is, there is always a solution. That's what I found as a relationship expert is we really can find a solution. So love is a beauty. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a very lovely way to kind of wrap up. And I will definitely echo that. And I will also say one of the things that I also think is important, this is just kind of my last thought here, is that I think it's important to also be able to relax and enjoy the process. Sometimes I worry, Alex, that people are listening to all these videos and they have so much information rolling around in their heads that they're not going to be able to relax and enjoy the process. And I believe it's pretty hard to scare off the right guy. If you're, you know, he's not going to be scared off if you say something inartfully or awkwardly. And um, so if we can relax and enjoy the process more, I think that's going to help a lot too, because I think we have to remember love, dating, romance. This is all supposed to be fun. Right? <laughs> that's true. That's true. Don't become a robot. Enjoy the process. Yes, that's very yeah. important. Yeah, it is. So, Alex, I really want to thank you. And before we wrap up, I also want to give you an opportunity. We're going to put a link to your website and a link mm -hmm. to your channel, your amazing rockin' channel thank um, you. in the description here. But I also want to give you a chance to share a little bit more about how people can be in touch with you and what they can get on your channel and website. Yeah, thank you so much, Michelle. It was such a pleasure. I know I have a strong French accent. I'm trying my best, but I really want to share this with you ladies. So if you like my philosophy, you can come to my YouTube channel or website. It's always French Relationship Expert. So very simple. And one more time, thank you so much, so much Michelle. I hope that you appreciate these videos. Yeah, thank you so much, Alex. And again, we'll put um, the links to his channel and everything here. And also, if you haven't already subscribed here, make sure you do, because I'm going to be <laughs> interviewing, hopefully, Alex again in the future and other experts. Um, I love interacting with my peers and colleagues. And by the way, Alex, the French accent, this accent is really working for us Americans. <laughs> Just saying. Thank very you. sexy. We love it. I hope so. But sometimes it's, it was very difficult to learn English, but I wanted to share my philosophy. So thank you. It gives me some strength. Yes. All <laughs> right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. And thanks again, Alex. Um, thank really you. appreciate your um, banter and our opportunity to go back and forth and your generosity and sharing your wisdom. We really appreciate it. Same, Michelle. It was such a pleasure. Thank you so much. Okay, everybody. Bye for now.